Hello everybody and welcome to Strategy, a YouTube series that is dedicated to helping teams climb the rank 5's ladder by improving their ability to work together as well as providing them with methods that can help develop their thinking and playstyles. My name is Venius and today we are going to discuss the teamfight composition. We will look at what a teamfight composition typically consists of, the general win conditions associated with the team comp, and how to best create situations to achieve those win conditions. We will then look at some examples so that you may gain a better understanding of how great teamfight compositions can actually be. So, what is a teamfight composition? Well, if you haven't guessed already, it is a composition that is built around fighting the enemy team, typically in a 4 vs 4 or 5 vs 5 fashion. One of the most well-known examples of this is the Wombo Combo. This is where multiple champions will have big area of effect abilities that can stack on top of each other and do insane amounts of burst damage to the entire enemy team in a short space of time. However, there are other ways to play teamfight compositions. You do not need a Wombo Combo, you just need a composition made up of champions that, when they come together, are strong at teamfighting. To make a strong teamfight comp, you need a few things. The first is a reliable engage. There is no point building a teamfight composition if you have no way to start a teamfight. The engage is very important and due to this, they will often have more than one source of engage to increase the number of ways to force fights. The second are strong laners. If your laners are in a position where they are losing before you get out of the laning phase, then it will be harder to come out ahead in a teamfight. You want to pick champions that are known for being strong and can hold their own during the laning phase. The third is that your champion should synergize. This does not always mean that your composition has to have stackable abilities like a wombo combo. What it means is that all of the champions have a complementary focus. The Juggermore is a good example of all of the champions having a complementary focus because they are all trying to keep the Cogmore alive. An alternative could use a number of tanky champions that target the enemy backline knowing that the enemy frontline will be taken out before yours is. So now that we know what a teamfight composition is, let's look at what we need to do to win a game with one. Win conditions are what the team needs to do to win the game. In the case of a teamfight comp, they win by being able to have a strong control over objectives. Objectives such as Dragon, Baron, Blue, Red and Towers are all points on the map that both teams will fight for. By having a teamfight composition, you naturally have the advantage in these fights due to the nature of your champions. There are two important things to remember while executing a teamfight composition. The first is you have to realise when you can and cannot fight. The great thing about these compositions is that no matter how far behind you are, if you can get the perfect fight, you can swing things back in your favour. However, the opposite is also true. Going for a fight that you have no chance of winning will just make your lives difficult. The best way to know if you can win a fight or not is to do one of the following. The first is to look at your items and the enemy's items, who has the bigger power spikes at that point in the game. Another is to have a look at your positioning. Can we afford to fight in this choke point or do we need a more open area? Another is to check on your cooldowns. Do we have flash on our AD carry and do they have flash on their AD carry? Being able to recognize these things will give you a big advantage over so many of the teams on the ladder simply because they do not do it. Learning these basic things can significantly improve your gameplay. The second thing to realise is how well you can control the objective that you want to fight over with vision. Vision is extremely important when playing a teamfight composition simply because you want to know exactly where the enemy is coming from as you start the objective and the point at which is best for you to fight. The final thing to remember when executing a teamfight composition is to have a clear plan before starting the fight. It is important that every player understands their role in the teamfight before it happens, because teamfights are often quite scrappy and one person can't be responsible for controlling everybody's position. Clear calls and good plans result in success. Let's now take a look at some professional teams utilising a well executed teamfight with a teamfight composition. We're going to be looking at Game 5 between Korea's ESC Ever and China's QG Reapers in the final of the 2015 IEM Cologne. The team we're going to be concentrating on is Ever, so we're going to do a quick run through of what makes their composition good at teamfighting. The first is that they have a reliable engage in the form of Callista and Alistair. The Fates Call into the Headbutt and Pulverize combo makes for a very easy way for them to start any fight. 
The second is that all of the laners can handle themselves during the laning phase. Callista has a lot of mobility making it harder to gank her, she has an easy time farming and plenty of trade potential. Fiora is labelled as the duelist for a reason. Her ability to dominate is quite apparent given her kit, meaning that she can also hold her own during the laning phase. Ryze works quite nicely here because of how strong the other side lanes are. In this situation, jungle pressure has to be sent to those other side lanes because Ever naturally have the stronger champions, meaning Ryze can effectively get a free lane. The third is that the composition synergizes nicely. It is very easy to follow up on any engage due to the high mobility available on every champion in the composition. Also, the entire composition is very single target focused, meaning they find a target and they kill that target quickly. This is made easier by the displacement that comes from Alistair and the strong frontline presence that Dr. Mundo provides. Moving on to the actual fight, the first thing you'll notice is that Fiora has already been killed as a result of overextending and getting caught out. QG see this as an opportunity to start the Baron. Remember that I previously mentioned teamfight compositions are ideal for playing around objectives, and even with a numbers disadvantage, their composition still excels in this situation. The first thing to note is this frontline presence of Mundo and Alistair that QG now have to play around. They show themselves at the entrance to the pit while the backline of Callista and Ryze are moving into position. Then comes the engage from Alistair. This is a best case scenario where Alistair gets an engagement off without having to use the Fate's Call. This results in QG being stuck in the pit, taking free damage from Baron and finding some way to get rid of a tanky frontline. Callista is now in a position to just start beating down onto QG, who is stuck between a rock and a hard place. They try to catch out Callista, but thanks once again to the Alistair acting as a reliable frontline, they are unable to land any solid crowd control onto her, but force her back with the exhaust. Notice now that because Rek'Sai's flashed in to try and isolate Callista, the composition of Ever can kick into effect of focusing down a single target. Even though Callista falls, she was able to do her job because of two simple things. The first is that a huge number of resources were invested just to take her down. And the second is that she was still able to get a huge amount of damage down while the Rise was completely unharmed. At this point, Rise can start cleaning up the fight because of the immense single target damage he has while Alistair and Mundo continue to act as a solid frontline and force QG to constantly play around them. This is a great teamfight because every player executed what they needed to do to achieve their win conditions, and because of this they were able to pull it off in a 4 vs 5 scenario. This comes back to what I was talking about when it comes to communication. Teams at this level would likely understand what needs to be done without having to verbally express it beforehand. However, as a developing team it will take you time to learn this, but with continuous practice it will become second nature in no time. That concludes this episode of Strategy. If you have enjoyed and would like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe and check out my other social media. If you have any feedback or suggestions for future episodes, please leave them in the comments section below. With that, best of luck on the ladder and have a good one.